As the years go on, game companies need to adapt their franchises to the times if they're simply not working. On the other hand, some franchises are so popular that their developers are willing to experiment. The more I thought about this, the more I realized how drastically some series have changed over the years. So in today's video, I'll be discussing six JRPG franchises that have completely switched genres over the years, so let's get started. What's going on? My name is Taylor and welcome to The Gaming Shelf. If you enjoy JRPGs and want to stay up to date with the latest news, reviews, and other fun videos, then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Starting off, let's talk about Final Fantasy. It's one of the longest running RPG franchises and you've probably heard about it. It has a deep catalog of beloved games that almost everyone that plays games is familiar with. As it grew in popularity over the years, Square experimented with some spin-offs. The first one that comes to mind is Final Fantasy Tactics, a really great strategy RPG. It removed the exploration of the core series and instead focuses on deep strategy gameplay. It does, however, retain familiar elements like items, the job system, and even familiar characters like Cloud, Balthier, and others that you can get as side characters. It was so popular that it spawned several sequels in the Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced subseries, not to mention the spin-off Final Fantasy XII Revenant Wings. Now this isn't the only game outside of the RPG genre that Final Fantasy is experimented with. One of my favorites is the music rhythm game Theater Rhythm. It's super fun and addicting. Not to mention, it's a great way to honor the legacy of great music. There's also, of course, Dissidia, a fighting game series made up of popular characters from the core Final Fantasy franchise. There were two games on PSP, and eventually it did come to consoles. Now, if I'm a betting man, I would say that that's probably not the last time Square is going to experiment with this beloved series. Parasite Eve began as a unique horror-themed RPG and is still one of the very few horror-themed RPGs today. It had interesting real-time combat, but it was definitely an RPG with its various leveling up mechanics for Aya and your equipment. But of course you also had item management with your bullets. Now with its sequel Parasite Eve 2, it was just a straight up Resident Evil clone. This included everything from the static camera to tank controls. Then the series went way off the rails with the third birthday. This game went full on third person shooter and lost all horror elements. The story went into some weird sci-fi elements and actually ripped off Mindjack of all games. Now for those of you who don't remember, Mindjack isn't exactly one of the most beloved games of the PS3 360 era. Ultimately, The Third Birthday had some middling reviews and it's sadly been the last game of the series. Although there have been teases, including in the Final Fantasy VII Remake reveal trailer, so there still might be hope for this series after all. Front Mission began as a deep strategy series all about outfitting your Wanzers and carefully plotting out your moves, similar to the previously mentioned Final Fantasy Tactics. This style of gameplay carried the series from 1995 until 2005. Front Mission 3 in particular is considered a fan favorite and one of the all-time greats on PlayStation 1. However, the series would shift starting with Front Mission Online and eventually worldwide with Front Mission Evolved. Gone is the turn-based strategy gameplay, and in its place is a more fast-paced third-person style of combat. To the uninitiated, this might look like From Software's Armored Core with its high-octane action. In my opinion, this shift was really a symptom of the time where everything was trying to copy Call of Duty. This shift in gameplay styles didn't fare well as critics and fans alike panned the game and it was basically the end of the series. Unless, of course, you want to count the dreadful Left Alive, but who wants to do that? One of the longest running dungeon crawler series is Shin Megami Tensei. It's known for its dark tone and addictive, yet brutal gameplay. The series is highly regarded today, and the oddly absent Shin Megami Tensei 5 is one of the most highly anticipated games for the Nintendo Switch. However, Atlas decided it wanted to shake things up with its 1996 release, Revelations Persona. While its original PS1 release did not carry the Shin Megami Tensei moniker, its PSP release did. It still stayed true to its dungeon crawling roots, but Persona had more of an emphasis on story and exploration. As the years went on, the Persona subseries became more popular than the series it started from, eventually dropping the Shin Megami Tensei moniker altogether. The SMT series also dipped its toe into the strategy RPG subgenre with Devil Survivor. Signature elements like demons and spell names carried over, however the characters and stories stood on their own. To date there have only been two core Devil Survivor games, both receiving enhanced 3DS ports, and both are well regarded by fans. At its core, Soccer Wars is really a visual novel dating sim masquerading as a JRPG, but its fun combat is undeniable. Its first five releases employed strategy RPG gameplay in which you captained a squad of mechs. The dating sim elements blended with its combat by providing enhanced movements and abilities depending on your interactions with particular characters. Sadly, the series took a massive hiatus after 2005's So Long My Love, but triumphantly returned with a PS4 title simply named Soccer Wars. This game retained the visual novel dating sim elements the series was known for, along with Sumire, a recurring character in the series. However, the combat segments were completely different. While you still battle in mechs, the gameplay was more action-oriented and akin to something like Koei Tecmo's Dynasty Warriors series. 
You had the ability to swap between characters on the fly, each wielding their own unique weapon like katanas, a flaming hammer, and even magic. This came as a bit of a shock to longtime fans, however the new gameplay style was mostly well received. Most JRPG series lately have made a shift to action combat, so if Sega ever decided to greenlit a sequel, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see this new action combat return. Last but certainly not least, we have Valkyria Chronicles. This is one of the greatest and most beloved JRPG series of all time. It has incredible strategy gameplay that blends third-person shooting elements to create a one-of-a-kind combat system. Not to mention the gorgeous watercolor art style and a heartwarming story that will bring a tear to your eye. The series hummed along with three quality games. Two and three were unfortunately relegated to the PSP with three never releasing outside of Japan. Whether due to poor sales or simply wanting to experiment, Sega eventually released the abomination known as Valkyria Revolution. The effort to incorporate more action elements was earnest, but it simply went against everything that made the core series great. It was easy to tell right away that this mashup of strategy elements and melee combat just didn't work. Revolution was a total mess from top to bottom that neither fans or critics enjoyed. Thankfully, Sega came to their senses and eventually released the excellent Valkyria Chronicles 4 that went back to the gameplay style that fans loved. While the characters weren't as strong, the gameplay was improved in several ways. In fact, Valkyria Chronicles 4 made it on my list of favorite JRPGs in 2018. Now if you want to see my list of all-time favorite JRPGs, check out my Top 10 JRPGs video. Lots of people have said it's a unique selection of games, so I'm curious to hear what you have to say. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.